Good evening, everybody. Today is your first oral test, speaking test in my class. And yesterday, I assigned students some questions to talk about for two minutes to five minutes. And after talking for five minutes, the students may ask you some questions, okay? But asking questions is not mandatory, it is voluntary. Okay, the first speaker is, uh, the first person to talk is Bushwa. Bushwa, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, just a second. Okay, Jenny, can you please read the question? Should you be allowed to speak in your mother tongue during English class? Okay, good evening, everyone. As you know, my question is, should you be allowed to speak in your mother tongue during English class? In my opinion, I say that you should not be allowed to speak native language in your English class because in my english class there are a lot of people from different communities races and from different countries there are multicultural people so they don't understand your language so if i have been given on one hand if i have been given chance uh, to speak in my mother tongue there is uh, no one can understand. So it's all in vain uh, because the, uh, the people, they don't understand you, your language, because they are from different countries and their languages are different. So, and on the other hand, uh, it is unprofessional to speak your native language in your class. We are all here to learn about English and our ultimate goal should be to speak English as much as we can to improve our communication skills. So I, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I appreciate everyone to be uh, uh, professional and to speak English whenever you uh, should be given chance or uh, whenever uh, uh, you spoke with other people you should uh, speak in english uh, so that uh, your commu uh, communication skills should be enhanced and um, if you not practice english you should not improve your language skills. Okay, that is Bushra, that's it. Okay, so um, any question for Bushra? Anybody? Bushra, what is your mother tongue? Uh, my mother tongue is Urdu. And I, oh. I think no one here, maybe one or two, maybe understand, but I think uh, that no one can understand Urdu here in our class. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So interesting. Another question. Thank you. Mama. <clears throat> yes, Bushra. Can you tell me, please, it is better and easier to practice English language with a specialist like teacher or with public? Uh, both are good for learning and uh, for professionalism, you need a teacher and to improve your English or to uh, uh, to get better or uh, uh, to have rhythm in your English, try to speak with your colleagues, your uh, um, uh, colleagues or your uh, co-workers, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mohammed, for a good, good question. <clears throat> okay, so now, uh, Bushra, you're gonna, uh, okay, who is doing number two? It's Who's me. 
Emeline? It's Emeline, yeah. Joshua asked Emeline. You see, Emeline. Emeline, should minors be allowed to purchase lottery tickets? No. Uh, minor should not be allowed to purchase to purchase a lottery ticket. In because in my opinion, um, firstly is against the law for me not to purchase a lottery ticket. You have to have at least I think 18 years old to purchase a lottery ticket. And by the way, I think that um, adult or parents who uh, give who, who, uh, give to their kid uh, the ticket lottery as a gift is for me uh, unconscious for them to do that because kids are kids and they don't really uh, know how to control yourself face of that. And secondly, um, I think Mino should not be allowed to purchase the ticket lottery because it protect them to to develop to develop uh, like a gambling habit in their young age. And it can be really addicted to them. And uh, thirdly, I think most of the minor don't have like uh, a job or they don't have like any stability financially, fin financially uh, speaking. So for me to put us lottery, you have to, to get at least a job. And in their age, they, they depend on their parents and they may, they may run, how they say, ruin uh, their, their parents. And also, I, I, think, uh, I think also Mino should not be allowed because uh, they, can, they can use their, their lunch money to do it every time. <laughs> So that's that's the reason that I think they should not be be allowed to purchase a lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. um, question for Emily. Come on, show me your English. <laughs> no question. Okay, Emily. Okay, who's doing the number three? Have you ever purchased lottery tickets? No, never. Why? I'm just afraid or scared to lose my money. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good job because me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, today I just bought twenty dollars. <laughs> Larry tickets. Okay, but forget that you heard it. We are recording. Okay, okay. Emily, uh, who's doing the number three? Me, teacher. Okay, Jethro. Emily, ask Jethro question number three. You see, Jethro. Jethro, in your opinion, when should young people be allowed to operate a vehicle? When should young people start driving? This is the question. So, in my opinion, uh, it's not just about age. You know, legally, it's range from 16 to, to 18, depending, of course, on where you live. But more importantly, it's about maturity and responsibility. So driving requires, you know, quick decision making, emotional, con emotional control, and a good understanding of 
road rules. So which are taught through driver's education and also physical readiness is crucial. You know, you need to be able to handle a car safety. So cultural views also play a, a part influencing when it's it's seen appropriate to start driving. I believe, um, be honest, a good approach. It is a good approach. Graduated licenses when you can you you gain more privileges as you gain experiences as a practice. So this help ensure new drivers are really ready for the work. So in conclusion, allowing young individuals to drive at a younger age on the graduated licensing system can be a beneficial approach uh, as is con combined, you know, um, as I say before, nurturing true education with gradual exposure to more uh, complex driving situation. So, depend on the culture, the, 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 the space, the, the, the area you live. This is uh, education, the key of, uh, of driving, you know, to be safe, you assure that the person on the 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 the, the, the not pressure on the, the 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 a lot of tests you know you are sure that it gonna be a safe driver it's not about only what ages to to allow uh, a, a person to, to to drive okay thank you jetro jetro did you write this or you're speaking impromptu um I I I'm not I'm not writing all. I just think about the introduction. And you know why? I love your answers, and I like you to um, send this answer to me. But if you did not write it, don't worry. I uh, did not write I, it. I love your answer. I love your answers. Maybe I can use it in the future, right? If you can, but if you don't have it, don't worry. I'm gonna uh, send the introduction on. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you go on Messenger, you can uh, just um, send it to me through Messenger and I will cut and paste. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So Gabriel has a question for you, Jethro. Hello, Jethro. Yeah. You said um, driving should not be regard to age, as in age does not matter. Exactly. Now I want to ask: If you have a a child of a five years old, will you allow him to drive your jeep? Um, <laughs> yeah, I can allow him to drive my jeep on my yard, for example. <laughs> if I feel that this my kid at five can drive, oh my God, I'm gonna push him to drive. Right? I'm not normally gonna get him take a road to drive. I'm not crazy, no. So I'm gonna push him to drive. I, you know, I'm not the only one who think like that. I, I, I remember I, I, I watched one day a do documentary on how a young kid, I, th I think a kid at, at this same range, six or five or six drive, you know, a, a car by itself. It was so so interesting to notice that. So I think um, I will push him, you know, to drive. Yeah. Thank you Jethro, for your response. Jethro, I just want to remind you that Gabriel is talking about, about people driving on the street. 
no travel one in, in the back area. No one does. Of course. <laughs> okay. So, but okay, interesting. Okay. Next, uh, Jethro, uh, who's who's doing number number four? Me. Legacy. Me. Uh, legacy. Okay, Jethro as legacy. Legacy. When should young people be allowed to smoke or buy cigarettes? Uh, Jethro, in my opinion, there is no appropriate urge for young people to smoke or purchase cigarettes because different countries they have different laws. As smoking poses significant health risks, especially for developing bodies and minds, permitting young individuals to engage in such harmful habits not only endangers their health, but also sets a detrimental precedent for their future well-being. And instead of debating when they should be allowed to smoke, effort should focus on comprehensive education and prevention programs to dissuade young people from overthinking up this harmful habit. We should empower them with knowledge and resources to make informed decisions that prioritize their health and longevity. Okay, question for legacy. Gabriel has a question. Welcome, Gabriel. Legacy, you said um, age is not a factor when it comes to smoking. Don't you think that young people should be discouraged from smoking? Legacy, do you understand the question? No, I didn't listen to his question. Maybe I think it was interrupted. His speech was interrupted. Sorry for that. Okay, Gabriel, one more time. Yeah. I said in your speech, you said age should not be a, fa a factor to be considered in smoking. So I now ask, don't you think young people should be discouraged from smoking? What do you mean, new people? Is that uh, newborn people or young guys? What do you mean, new people? We are talking uh, about the age. So do you mean that uh, your question is uh, regarding yours? Gabriel, did you listen to my uh, speech? Yes, I listened, but I don't understand your response. The question I'm asking, based on the question, that when should young people be allowed to smoke or buy cigarettes? And you said, age should not be a factor when considering smoking or not. So I ask, when you are now looking at from age zero to 16, do you think the government should be encouraging them to smoke as well, like adults? Not, not three. Really. It's not like that. Uh, uh, my aim is uh, we should have to educate the young people the harmonies of uh, having the cigarette or having smoking. If we make them, uh, if we show them all the side effects of smoking, if we show them the disadvantage of smoking, if we make, if we, if we make them to understand on their mind, they will not use. They will not use to smoke. But if we make the age restriction without uh, making any behavioral change or without making any knowledge on their mind, uh, it will be it will be very disaster because they can purchase uh, from any any shops by hiding from their parents, by hiding from the rules. They can use it, but if we make it in their mind, they will not use it for sure because it will help them to protect their health. Okay. Thank you. In simple, okay. In simple English, Gabriel Legacy is saying, "If this is not about age, people should not smoke." That's it. Okay. So that's what he meant. <laughs> Muhammad, question. Yes, yes, sir. Please. <clears throat> Are you a smoker? If yes, how uh, 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 do you feel that on yourself? And if you 
you have a child, you will allow him to smoke? Uh, to start from mine, I am not smoker, but uh, for, for regarding my child, I have to teach him first uh, the disadvantage of uh, having smoke uh, regarding health. If he so understands. You are a smoker or not? No, 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 I am not. Ah, not a smoker, okay. Good. But re 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 yeah, regarding your, my child. Your child will, will see you. Well, look, how is his father? <laughs> Yeah, and he will see almost how his the kids will repeat the habits from their uh, parents. If it is good, it, he will be the same. I think that. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah, thank okay, you so thanks. much. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Next question is number five. Who <coughs> is gonna answer number five? Uh, I think it's mine. Yeah. Okay, legacy as Muhammad. Legacy, your microphone is off. Sorry for that, Andrew. Uh, Mohammed, when should yeah. young people be allowed to consume alcoholic beverages? Beverages. Uh, you know, in uh, in almost on mo most the countries of the world, uh, I think uh, that uh, it is different the age uh, that they are allowed uh, to drink. I think it is around between 18 and 21 years. It is depends all, almost on the uh, maturity level and the social norms and uh, the health considerations in every country. Uh, so uh, in my opinion, as I am a Muslim and living in Arabic country, uh, I think uh, that alcohol uh, consumption is prohibited by a religious law. Uh, this prohibition is based on teaching in our Quran in general, as I uh, especially, especially in our Quran. Uh, uh, I think alcohol is harmful for uh, 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 for every, every everyone. It is harmful for individ uh, to individuals and to society in general. Similarly, in many Arab countries, alcohol is not cons uh, cons consumed. Uh, uh, but I want to say that uh, uh, alcohol, as I am as I am a doctor, alcohol have has many uh, risk uh, factors or many uh, harmful uh, factors on the person one of them it is uh, effect on his health excessive alcohol consumption can lead to many diseases one of them it's uh, on the uh, liver it may be it may damage the liver cells and lead to a uh, disease named alcoholic alcoholic hepatitis so uh, it, it, it will be a, a big and very dangerous disease, really. And it will be uh, if affected on, on, uh, on the brain, on the uh, heart, on the kidney. In general, it's, it's very harmful for the health of the uh, uh, people. In addition, I will uh, notice that uh, uh, alcohol is addictive and uh, regular consumptions can lead to alcohol uh, dependence and uh, addiction. So it leads to personal and social problems. Uh, I can add that alcohol impairs judgment and uh, coordination. So it leads uh, to uh, accidents, injuries, and uh, uh, many risk behaviors such as drunk uh, driving uh, yes. okay so I can, uh, that social uh, that one of of the risk or side effects of alcoholic alcohol its social consequences excessive alcohol consumptions uh, can lead uh, to relationship problems 
uh, that decrease uh, productivity, for example. Finally, I can say that uh, while in some countries or in some uh, uh, places, uh, moderate alcohol consumption may be not be harmful uh, for everyone, but excessive of uh, but excessive and uh, irresponsible drinking uh, can uh, have uh, serious consequences for uh, individuals and for uh, society in general. That is okay. Yeah, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, Gabriel has a question. Okay. Hello, Mohammed. Thank you for your speech. I I want to ask. Can so medically can someone that is addicted to yeah. drinking medically is there any way to stop? Yeah, yeah. Medically, medically, uh, there is there is special centers that uh, uh, where uh, can treat uh, addiction, addictive people that. Uh, there they must be uh, closed in that center uh, for uh, two weeks to four weeks approximately and uh, they will uh, uh, cut them about all the types of alcohols and give them some medi medi uh, medicines uh, like uh, 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 medicines that affect on the relaxing and sedative uh, uh, medicines to get him uh, to give him uh, some relaxation to uh, improve his condition to pass this time. That is in general. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna proceed to the next one. Thank you, Mohammed. Beautiful. And thank you for the question, Gabriel. Okay, okay Muhammad, you're gonna ask the next person. Okay, who's doing number six? Rahim. Who's doing number six? Rahim. Rahim, yeah. Okay, okay, Rachel, number six. Rachel. Uh, Muhammad, please read. In your opinion, Rachel, at what age should couples get married? I believe that an individual or a couple should never decide to get married before accomplishing their, their goals in life, like it could be education, they should have fun first with their friends, spend enough time with family, live it, live it independently alone, then the more they accomplish that it would be best for them to decide to get married especially when they feel or wish to have family that time would be good and and crucial with without accomplishing those things it would be hard for them to survive in marriage because marriage needs a dedication and commitment I will not, I don't want to put a certain age uh, for marriage, but uh, it would be good for them to get married from 26 to 32 for women and for men from 32 to uh, 36, even though different countries have different range. Uh, this would be good range for the couples that, that they will be more dedicated not jealous of each other, they will compromise in life, they will be patient and they will try to tolerate a lot of things. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Question for Rachel. Okay. Well, Can I ask? Question. Yeah. Uh, Rahim, uh, um, you said that uh, it is not related to age and it is the best between 18 and 30, I think, or 24 and 30, yeah? 26 up to 32. 26 and up to 32? For women. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, all the time, the marriage, it is related to productivity. So, 
if uh, if they will be married uh, in 32 i think uh, it's not bad age but the productivity uh, uh, to get a baby it's uh, you know because it is close to 40 especially with related to women not to men uh, 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 medically it's preferred it's preferred below 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 36 or 38 maximum you know why because many of genetic diseases that appears with the baby after 38 or 36 in general i am seeing uh, i'm saying so medically it is preferred i'm saying now uh, as a doctor again okay. medically it is preferred it is preferred uh, the marriage the marriage must be between 18 18 and 30. it is the best age for the woman okay mm -hmm. that is my notice <laughs> is it yes. okay yeah but i don't think in my opinion i don't think 18 is too early for a woman or a man to get married because yeah yeah in gen yeah 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 but but it's the a relationship between a man and a woman so the age must be combined and balanced between a man and a woman that's what i mean so it is preferred yeah yeah i know early age it's not good for both of them because they are not uh, uh, yet responsive they haven't a responsibility they are they are not uh, uh, adult uh, uh, yet enough uh, their mind is uh, they are thinking as maybe sometimes as a, as a kids or child or adolescents but uh, the productivity age it is the best between 18 and third it's it's a science not not me so mm -hmm. it is in this age it is the best to 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 marry and to uh, uh, plan for for uh, for uh, for baby but did you notice that many people in north america they graduate from university first before they get married and that's also the the reason why they only have one child or two children yeah. if your goal is to have five or ten children then 32 will be too late yeah but if your goal in getting married is to have somebody to be with you it's not really about children then it doesn't matter how old um is the woman or the man uh, marriage is you know being together and uh, loving to uh, each other but if your goal is to produce a lot of babies then 18 19 20 21 will be the best age for you but if your goal in a marriage is to have somebody to be with you the the person that you respect to love and to build your life together then um it doesn't matter if you get married when you're 32 or 33. okay so if you only want one child even 30 you can get married so in 32 you have a baby so you're you're fine you be uh, that's before 38 so um yeah okay so anyway um i don't want to <laughs> interfere with that okay so next uh who's doing the number seven me sandra it's your it's yours yes okay rachel ask sandra sandra in your opinion, should couples sleep together before marriage? Uh, in my opinion, and in my experience also, I really believe that it's important or it's good that partners live together before marriage because this allows partner partners to share habits, routines uh lifestyles uh preferences so this can help them to know more each other um more than be just uh, in a relationship and then get married and they maybe find out when they marry that they don't share 
similar things about the real life. So this can end in a rupture into a divorce because I think or I um I consider it that divorce rates are high. So this is such a traumatic experience for partners, which you can avoid if you live together before get married and you know or you make sure that um, you're really gonna make a life. Like, you know, you have difference or conflicts, but you know now that you can solve these problems or you are able to understand the other partner even if you are not agree so in my experience too i really believe that living with your partner before get married that uh, made your relationship strongest so at one point you know if you really want to get married or if this is not gonna work out and you can move on easily than passing through a divorce. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's my opinion. But Sandra, you said that you said that living together before marriage is uh, you, you, you agree with the idea. But my question is you live together before marriage are you gonna have a baby during this time because if you have a baby during this time if you separate it's difficult because you have a child together if you live together what is your opinion about that yes uh, about children before marriage yeah i really think that uh i believe in living together before before marriage but in a certain way that you already talk with your partner before doing this and you have an agreement to share the experience to know if you are making for each other uh before have child so if you have them at maturity to decide and live together i think you also can handle um that if you are not prepared to have child wait to get married or yeah. wait to see if you're living together it's gonna work out so yeah, yeah I, I don't a, think yeah. have child it's a good idea when you start living with someone until you make sure that that's the person uh that you want to spend the rest of your life or yeah yes because sandra i know somebody uh he lived together with a uh, with uh, his uh partner and for i think two years and then they were ha very happy but when the woman got pregnant she became possessive she became possessive she can try to control the husband and right now they are separated and they have a baby you know but before the baby they were happy they were okay but when the baby was born uh she became possessive and she uses the baby to control the partner uh soraya you have a question Soraya, Mohammed, do you have a question? Teacher, I, have, I am speaking. Uh, teacher, I want to tell Sandra that it's not uh, very important to live uh, with uh, uh, my, the, the people that I will marry him before I marriage to be know himself. And uh, in the, my religion as Muslim, we have a period uh, uh, engaged period in this uh, uh, period i can uh, know exactly what the behavior and attitude of the person i will manage him i don't i don't need to live with him together 
uh, to know himself. I can know himself without marriage in the period engaged. Maybe take one one uh, years. One years is enough to know exactly with that uh, person. Because in my religion, if the person, especially the man, if uh, live with the woman in the same home, never he will marry her. Okay, Muhammad. Muhammad, your microphone is off. Sorry. Uh, again, uh, uh, from medicine, uh, we studied that uh, when when the person change his partner in uh, 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 some periods and has uh, a, a multi partners maybe at the same time or in a closed uh, period not big period uh, the the person especially the woman she can got she can got one of the most dangerous diseases that discovered last time it is uh, papilloma in her genitals it is a virus that disappeared last 10 years with women named papilloma vagina that leads to cancer. The main reason it is the multi partners or changing the partners within not big period. This I, I think that I think that this will be appeared or will be happened when we have such this example, when we can live with the partners and we can uh, change it when we uh, discover that it's not the, that person that I need. After a few time or of some period, I will change it for change him to another one. So in medicine, I'm speaking in medicine now, not related to religion, just to religion. It is uh, dangerous when we change our partners or live with partners and change them after a few time it will lead sometimes not all the time sometimes will lead to dangerous disease it is viral papilloma that lead to cancer or ca uh, ca carcinoma of uh, genital organs in women for women yeah, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree with you because in Quran, God is mentioned about that. And now, and now, if you if you have a kids, and now, in 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 uh, in school, in the first class, they started a vaccination against this virus named papilloma vaccine to protect the girls, to protect the girls. Is that may be appeared in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Roman. Okay. Okay, next. Um, number eight. Who's doing number eight? Me, teacher. Soraya, right? Yeah. Okay, Sandra asked Soraya. Soraya. In your opinion, should Canada legalize eutanasia assisted dying? Uh, I uh, disagree because uh, all uh, holy religions uh, oppose uh, euthanasia. Uh, what God uh, for uh, forbids, uh, we must so, uh, also uh, prohibit. The most valuable gift. Uh, God has given us is life, which uh, which we have to protect until God take it away at the proper time. A person must be patient with their suffering because God will uh, repay them and uh, forgive uh, their uh, faults. Uh, he indeed his life to escape the suffering, but he forget that there is greater pain and punishment in the afterlife. 
uh, if uh, in the end, if a person wants to end his life, it is uh, this, uh, it uh, is his decision, and he bears that consequences with God. Very strong, Soraya. <laughs> Very strong answer. <laughs> okay, question for Soraya. Yeah, teacher, because I search for Muslim and Christian also, the same. Yes. Yeah. Okay, no question for Soraya? Okay, Soraya is going to ask the next question. Okay. Um, okay, next. Who's doing the number number nine? It's me, teacher. Jane. Uh, Jenny, right? Okay, Soraya, yeah. Jenny. Jenny, uh, should you be allowed to use your uh, bil building girl no, dictionary, bilingual. Bilingual. dictionary or Google Translate during English class? Um, Soraya, thank you for the question. <laughs> In my opinion, it should not be necessary to use a bilingual dictionary or Google Translate during English class because your level of English should be the same as the level of English you are studying. And sometimes the teacher use new words, uh, but they are in the context and become clear. Also, if you don't know the meaning of the words, you can ask. Uh, when students use English materials directly, uh, they learn faster and get more comfortable with the language. This immersion helps students understand how English work, works naturally, what Andrew tried to explain us. <laughs> After some time uh, learning English without translation tools, I mean, uh, students become more confident in their abilities and overcoming language problems increases their self-confidence. I mean, students. <laughs> English classes teacher use not just grammar and vocabulary, but also how to speak, how to listen, read and write in English. Uh, depending less on translation tools, encourage students to practice their skills more actively. So we try and I think. Mm -hmm. This okay. is my opinion. Question for Jenny? No? Okay. So we're going to move on to the next one. Jenny, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think Vadim, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you're you're number ten, right? Yeah, right. Okay, Jenny, ask Vadim. Um, should young adults pay their parents' rent if they are working and do not move out of by the age of twenty-one? What do you think, Vadim? So um, I don't have a notice in front of me. Uh, that's why I will speak from my. Uh, brain and from my heart. Um, the main idea I would like to share you with my experience. I started my own business in 16 and uh, I started to pay the rent from 17 and live separate from parents. And uh, this experience gave me feeling that I can take risks and uh, that I can be responsible. And of course, it will be depends on family, but uh, in my family, I would like my children to know how to take your risks and uh, to know how to be responsible and to, how to be strong so my idea that in that case of course is better uh, to give them the pay um, the pay rent together or like to be responsible for everything what they do um, because i think it's for me it's better to give a tool to my uh, children, to my family, uh, instead of food full of, uh, instead of plates full of food. Uh, I mean that, I, I think that in that age you have to wake up and you have to be strong and you have to know how to, um, to take responsibility for everything they should do. And uh, here I'm, I meet, when I arrived in Canada, uh from 2022 since 2022 
I I met uh, hundreds of people, and sometimes you look at the people who is 30, 40, and uh, they are still at teenagers. In my country, it's absolutely the same. Uh, not the same. It's absolutely uh, uh, other situation. And I think it's much better when uh, when people know what they do. When when people know how to how to treat about their families. And uh, I think it's a good way to give some learning for this adult, but sometimes still still young people in uh, 21. This is my opinion. Mm-hmm. Question for Vadim. What kind of business it was, Vadim, if it's not a secret? <laughs> it's just interesting. It's not a secret. In 616. It, it was guns and drugs. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it was a coffee business. I opened the coffee shops and after it became a chain of coffee shops in my city. Wow, okay. is it was successful? Yeah, sure. Till till the end uh, of the day when I was in Ukraine, I, I just sell it during even during the war. It's very popular in Ukraine, the coffee. Okay, Gabriel has a question. Uh, Vadim, what a wonderful speech. Thank you. Yeah, but I want to ask it. I want to put the question this way. If you have a child at the age yeah. of 30, 30. 30, okay. The child is, when you come to moral level, he or she is doing well. And he's doing all within his power to be responsible. But the money is not coming forth to pay for the rent, as you said. What are you going to do to that child? So, of course, it's not about, I don't have money, give me the money. It's, it's always not about money. It's about knowledge. I'll try to, to give him or her the, this knowledge that I have to help them to earn as much as possible, to help them to be responsible and to feel how to be responsible. And, of course, it's it's only it's only about how to be strong in, in this world. This is my answer. Okay, thank you. Any other question for Vadim? Okay, thank you, Vadim. Um, next, uh, who's doing the number eleven? Me. Me. Jane. <laughs> this is oh, Jane. Jane. Okay, Vadim. Yeah. Uh, Ask Jenny. Uh, should the incarcerated, uh, be, incarcerated. Incarcerated. Inca- incarcerated be allowed to participate in federal, provincial, and municipal elections? How do you think? Thank you for the question, Vadim. Incarcerated individuals are still citizens and may have the right to vote under democratic principles. Denied them the right uh, to vote may be seen as a violation of their citizenship rights. But uh, in my opinion, uh, prisoners should not be allowed to participate in the federal, provincial and municipal elections. This category of people has uh, uh, broken human rules, I think, and now must focus on their behavior and how to become better and uh, gain a new knowledge. It's not time uh, to avoid and uh, to be a participant in so serious deals. Uh, the eligibility of incarcerated individuals to avoid varies by country and jurisdiction. And I'm Google of this um, of this um, term. And for example, in New Zealand and Finland, those convicted of election, convicted of election fraud and corruption are deprived of their right to, to wait while in prison and for the next few years after their release. Uh, in China and Taiwan, uh, there is a prevention measure that depri- deprives people of political rights, include the rights to participate in elections. 
in the UK, um, most prisoners are banned for waiting. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. That's a good research. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, Jenny. Very serious, uh, Any question for Jenny? The simple meaning of the question is, if people are in jail, are they supposed that should they be allowed to vote in an election? That is the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, last question. Whose question, who's the last question? I think it's Sandra, right? Yeah, it's mine. Okay, Jenny, read the question. Uh, should parenting classes be majority for all parents? What do you think, Sandra? Uh, well, in my opinion, I really believe that uh, <clears throat> that these classes it can be a benefit for future parents and also for uh, for the society because. Um, this can be a support for that people that it's first time being parents because i really think that even when people tell you or even when you think that you're ready to be a parent uh you miss a lot of things yeah. that happen and you you don't know how to react or how to uh take care of these situations and be a good parent right um so this i really think this is positive for a child because uh, they can make sure that the child is gonna be in a safe place in a safe place to grow to grow up um also parents can get skills that they're gonna need in the early years of the child uh, because in my own experience i really thought that i was ready and that i have all the information and and yeah and i i can handle to have a child but when i already have it i struggle with a lot of things that i didn't know so I really think that if this is mandatory for all parents, uh, childs are going to be in a better places. Accidents that we see every day and bad things that the child uh, has to go through, maybe is going to uh, be less than we have now. So yeah. I'm agree. Yeah, any question for Sandra? Just want to add no? that I think that these classes should be free because I was in these classes, parenting classes with my husband. It was in Ukraine. We were preparing for um, our <laughs> baby and it was uh, for money of course but it was very helpful yeah okay thank you everybody for your hard work i'm just gonna stop the recording and i'm gonna show you something okay uh let me just stop the recording so i can post this <laughs>